Hey, welcome back everyone and Happy New Year. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. I know you got a lot of partying to do tonight, so I won't make it very long. This is a code challenge called Self-Describing Number. I'm going to show you what the code challenge is about and then I suggest that if you have the time, go out there and try to solve it on your own and then come back in a couple days whenever I have the solution video uploaded. Uh, it might actually be tomorrow, I'm not sure. It just depends on how much free time I have. And you can compare your solution with mine, or if you're not able to get the solution, you can see how I solve it. And so I'm hoping to do more stuff like this uh, throughout 2022. And I'm also hoping to produce a course where I have a whole bunch of challenges like this, where you can go through and just exercise your coding abilities and get ready for interviews or just make yourself a better developer by problem solving more frequently and building better habits. And for each of those questions in the course, we'll have a solution and a walkthrough to help students understand how you can solve these different problems. So look forward to that. Let's go ahead and get started with this uh, code challenge. Again, I'm not going to be showing you the solution in this video. Uh, I will have a follow-up video very soon where I will walk through how to code this on your own. All right, so this is called Self-Describing Number. And this is taken from a website called Rosetta Code. I will share a link to the slides in the description and a link directly to the uh, Rosetta Code website where I found this exercise. So the description here is that you want to write a function named is self-describing and it will check whether a given positive integer is self-describing and if it is it will return true or not it will return false. Okay so what is self-describing? What does that mean? There are several so-called self-describing or self-descriptive integers. That second one is blue because it's a link to a Wikipedia page that describes what self-descriptive means. I will link that in the description as well. It's also in the slides. Okay, so an integer is said to be self-describing if it has the property that when digit positions are labeled zero to n minus one, the digit in each position is equal to the number of times that that digit appears in the number. All right, that may not make perfect sense, but we're going to walk through an example here and you'll be able to see exactly what we're talking about. So, for example, the number 2020 or 2020 is a four digit self describing number. So, the first position, zero, think of it like an array with a zero based indices. So, that first position, zero, has the value two, and there are two zeros in the number, okay? So the position or the index correlates with whatever the value is at that index and whatever the value is is the total number of times that the position appears or that the index appears. So if the index in this case is zero, the very first position, then we expect to have however many zeros correlating to that value at the zeroth position. So in this case the value is two, so we expect to have two zeros. It's 2020 is the full number, so we do have two zeros, so that checks out. Now the next one is position one, and it has a value of zero. So this tells us that there are zero ones in this number. Well, 2020 doesn't have any ones in it, so that also checks out. We move on to the next position, two, which has a value of two, and that tells us that there are two of the number two in this number. Well, 2020 has two twos in it, so that checks out as well. Now finally we end up at position or index three, which has a value of zero, and that just tells us that there are zero threes in this number. Again, 2020 doesn't have any threes, so that checks out. All right, so self-describing numbers that are less than 100 million are 1210, 2020, 21200, 3211000, and 4210100. You can use those as uh, tests whenever you're writing your function you can put those inputs in and if they return true then your code is working correctly and if they return false then your code needs to be worked on further so again i've got the link here for the source but let's go to the next slide and let's look at kind of a visual of this algorithm all right so again we have two zero two zero and i've broken it up into something that looks kind of like an array right we have an array of numbers here two comma zero comma two comma zero and below it I have the indexes or the indices for each of these values. Again, they're referring to them as positions. We can call them a position or an index, doesn't matter. So two, the very first element in this array, has a index or a position of zero. And so you can see that I have these red lines going to the two zeros. 
So if the value is 2 and we're at position 0, we expect to have two zeros inside of the array. You can see that that's confirmed by those two red lines that are pointing to those two zeros. Moving forward, we have 1 pointing to a 0, which means there are no ones in here so there's no lines pointing anywhere because there's no ones then we get to the two position or the two index and its correlating value is two so that tells us that there are two twos in this number and so you can see those green lines pointing to the first two and the second two that confirms that there are two twos and then lastly three the third uh, index or position correlates to a zero telling us that there are zero or no threes in this number and as you can see, there's no lines pointing anywhere because we don't have a three. So that's it. You want to write a function. You can name it whatever you want. But in this case, I said name it is self-describing. It's going to take one input or one uh, parameter, one argument as a integer. It's going to be a whole number. Zero, well, start at zero, start at one, and go to any positive number all the way up to infinity. In this case, you were checking between uh, one and 100 million and you want to take that number and then run it through your algorithm and finally spit out true or false based on whether or not it is self-describing. So again, the link to these slides are in the description. If you need help with the prompt, I also have a link to the original problem, which actually has a solution in a bunch of different program languages over there at Rosetta Code. Uh, so I'll have that link for you to check out. And next time you see me, I will be showing you how to solve this with the JavaScript coding language. So thanks a lot for taking the time to watch this. Have a safe and happy new year, and we'll catch you all in the next video.